On drop rate is a series where I can only receive an item within its wiki stated rate, but with a twist. If I receive the item before or on its rate, I get to keep everything earned during the episode, including the desired item. However, if I do not end up getting it, I have to forfeit all the loot earned to you guys, the viewers. Let's introduce today's challenge. It is time to enter the abyss of the Lazar Undercity to take on the final Desert Treasure 2 boss of the series, the Whisperer. This boss can only be fought using magic, and luckily I have the best possible setup to take on this boss, worth a total of 2 billion GP. Just like the other Desert Treasure 2 bosses, we're going for another Soul Reaper Axe piece, this time called the Siren's Staff, at a drop rate of 1 in 512. As you can see, looking at my collection log, I have done this boss quite extensively before in another one of my videos outside of Undrop Rates. But most importantly, I never received the Vestige, aka the Bellator Ring, during that session. Meaning my chances of seeing it during this grind early on is extremely high due to its unique drop rate mechanic. Last time I did this boss, I got so many comments about not having this teleporter activated, which lets you teleport to the boss way quicker. So we now have that done. Let's begin by explaining how to defeat the Whisperer. During the fight, you will need to protect ranged and magic against the boss's basic attacks. These are the ranged ones and these magic. The attacks are always followed by four tentacles centering in on you. Move one step towards a direction with no tentacles to avoid taking damage. When the Whisperer reaches 75, 50 and 25% health, one of the three special attacks will occur. These are semi-random, but as long as you know how to tackle them, the order doesn't really matter. All the special attacks require you to press this item called the Blackstone Fragment earned during the Desert Treasure 2 quest to enter the Shadow Realm to be completed. First special attack requires you to hide behind three different pillars in order of health to avoid the boss's screech. Simply start at the lowest HP one and work up towards the highest. The second special attack spawns four rows of ghosts of varying colors. Use the Venator bow to defeat all of the ghosts before the timer runs out. Doing so hits the boss for 75 damage while also restoring a minor amount of health and prayer to yourself. Lastly, we have the egg phase. Simply go into the Shadow Realm and walk on the yellow colored eggs and that's pretty much it. At the end of every special phase, the boss will throw out a free spell on you and walk towards you. Use Ice Brush to avoid the boss from meleeing you for a massive amount. And finally, when the boss reaches 0% health, you will automatically be moved into the Shadow Realm for a final phase. DPS the boss down as quickly as you can and avoid constant tentacle spawns and attacks from the Whisperer. The rotation of the attacks from the boss is 2 ranged into 2 magic and then repeats. And that's it, congrats on defeating the Whisperer. No way. No way we get the Vestige this early. I, I knew I had a decent chance of getting it pretty early on, but 4kc is quite next level early. Of course, the first time making this ring, it is over 100 million GP, I'm pretty sure, right now. So still very good value. And there it is, the best slash ring in the entire game. So 61 million, but definitely worth more than that. Over 100 million GP was right, 106 million GP for just 4 KC so far of the grind. Of course, the rate of the ring is now reset, so getting another one in 4 more KC is extremely unlikely. Let's turn it into platinum tokens, chuck that into the bank, and keep track of the money earned. Last time I did the Whisperer, there was actually such a long respawn time of the boss, so when you defeated it, you had to wait like 12 seconds or something really crazy like that. But that has actually been changed. Look how fast it respawns. Should respawn any second now. And there it is. So before it was probably double that length. So sped up the grind by quite a bit. This is for you guys to watch my last Whisperer video. I am now finally using the teleport. And look how fast that is. Saving a lot of time. Hey, that did not take long. First Awakener's Orb of the Grind. Not that rare actually, one in 34.5, but because the Whisperer is the slowest to kill, it is kind of balanced to be more common. Oh, 105 battle staves. That is a perfect kill actually, so I got 50% more loot, and uh, there's actually a quite a lot of these really valuable common drops that you can get from the Whisperer. Oh, back-to-back -back battle staves, but 70 this time, that means of course I did not get a perfect kill that time, so it's not RNG, it's just I screwed up something. The money you make from this boss can definitely not be understated, 4.2 million GP in just one single trip. Of course, most of that is from the Awakener Orb and the battle staves, but as I said, they're not that rare to get. 
A very quick kill. Could actually be personal best. It kind of felt like it. And a very good drop as well. Another one of those pretty common high value drops. And yes, that was a personal best. 217. Not bad. I suppose we're coming up on the first milestone of the grind. 50k save. We made 10 million so far. Plus, of course, the 105 million from the Bellator Vestige. It's Madam and Longsword. But just look at my inventory, by the way. 3,150 raw monkfish. Imagine that for an Iron Man. This has to be one of the best ways to get consistent food on an Iron Man. Hey, first clue of the grind. The first one is easy clue scroll. As I've said in all the other bosses from Desert Treasure 2, they all have the same drop rates of 1 in 160 for a specific one, 1 in 40 for any clue scroll. Just having a look at the log again, now that I have the Vestige, I really would love to see the Virtus Mask and the Row Bottom because they are shared between all the Death of Treasure 2 bosses, so if I would get any of them, it would be basically 4 collection log slots unlocked right away. And the second clue scroll of the grind is an Elite, one of the best ones of course. I'm happy to announce that yet again, this video is sponsored by Creator Crafted. Get yourself officially licensed RuneScape related products such as the LED Light Collection. I myself got the Dragon Med Helm, but there's a bunch of more designs to pick from. If you're not really a big fan of LED lights, you can also get these beautiful DMM and Tombs of a Masked Mouse mats. Click my link in the description and use code ALONE10 at checkout to get 10% off your purchase. This is honestly the best way to support me as I get a very generous cut from each purchase and you get some extremely high high quality products in return. Again, thank you so much to Creator Crafted for sponsoring this video. No way that happened. What? A second Bellator Vestige? On 98kc? Do you guys know how rare it is to get another one right after you've got one? That is like unheard of because of the drop rate mechanic on this. That is uh, so much money. I guess we are making a second ring before even a hundred kill count has been done on the boss. This is- I've made over 200 million now in 100kc. Second one sold for just slightly less, 104 million, 103 million after tax of course. I guess let's turn it into platinum tokens and just keep stacking up the money we've made from this grind so far. How much is it? 222 million. Not bad. And the first big milestone coming in of the grind, 100kc done, and of course we have not seen the Siren Staff, which is the item we're hunting, but uh, can I really complain? Not a good start to the day, unfortunately. The servers seems to be lagging out like crazy, so I can barely play the game. It's definitely not my internet, because I've seen so many people in my Discord complain about it as well, so I might have to have a slow start to the day on this boss. And that's the connection lost, probably dead. Actually the first death I had in this grind, which I guess is a pretty good sign if the only thing making me die is disconnects. Look, look, he disconnected. Ah oh, yes, another orb, but the only thing that I can trust my clan to do when I get one of these is this. Oh, let the orb spam commence, two orbs in one inventory, I'll take it. Took a while, I suppose. That's the first hard clue of the grind as well, so the only one we are missing now is the medium one. We did it! We got the worst drop from the Whisperer. 24 bronze longsword, 240 GP. Not that bad, I guess. Or actually, yeah, very bad, I guess. What is the drop going to be for kill number 200? Another big milestone of the grind, I would say. Not quite the halfway point, but uh, 59 sapphires. I'll take it. The weapon I'm using, the Tumic and Shadow, amongst other things, actually triples your magic accuracy, and I've kind of realized I don't need to use the Augury Prayer at all. It drains a lot of prayer and only increases your accuracy, and because I never really miss on the Whisperer, I've realized it's just a bunch of wasted prayer points. With no Siren Staff in sight, that is now half of the grind done for some Adamant Doors as well, and we have also gained half a million magic experience, so that kind of means that if I go on rates, we will get around 1 million magic experience. Not the uh, ideal drop that I would like to see, but first Chromium Ingot of the grind, these are 1 in 170 roughly, but not worth too much unfortunately. Okay, in terms of uniques, this is probably the best trip I've done so far. Two Awakeners Orbs and a Chromium Ingot in the same trip. No way! Virtus Robe Top? No! The only Virtus item I have! But it is the most expensive one, so we can't complain about that. 
It looks so good as well on me, but of course I'm going to be selling it. That, surprisingly, works really well with my cape as well, but uh, no collection log slots, unfortunately. Let's go and check it out. So we have two of the same now, but as I said, the most expensive one, so can I really complain? Let's go ahead and put it in for 65 million seems to be the price that's selling at. I guess I'll just leave it in there for a bit and see if I can sell it. After putting it in the GE, I went for a bit of a small break. So let's see if it actually sold. And yes, it did for 65 million, exactly 64.3 million after tax. Let's just turn it into platinum tokens and chuck it into the bank. What are we going to get for kill number 300 of the grind? Anything good? Bronze longsword. Are you kidding me? The worst one another supply drop how many am i going to get this trip there's like five supply drops on the ground this is going to be the longest trip in history oh right you can get shadow quartz here i completely forgot that was an item it's one in 218 also we got a hard clue score on top of that so actually that combination of drops is probably pretty rare to get and we have the second chromium ingot coming in no, not again. This happened on the other bosses I did as well. Die at the same time as the boss. That unfortunately means it doesn't track on the loot tracker, but it's still counted as a kill. So unfortunately, the tracker will be one behind from now on. Another quartz. I guess I'll take it. Man, are you kidding me? I died again. And this time I actually died to sanity. That is the first death to sanity. That is unfortunate. But uh, that means the kill tracker is now two behind. Kind of unfortunately it worked this way, but that means the NKC is 510 on the tracker. And on exactly kill 350, we have now got 10 Awakeners Orb, which is pretty much exactly on rate. I'm sure some people have been thinking, why are you not using a special attack weapon? For example, the Accursed Scepter, which reduces the target's defense. The thing is, the Tumican Shadow is so extremely accurate, as I've said before with the Augury, that I haven't thought I needed it, but I'm just going to give it a shot and see how it is. Of course, as we're not in the wilderness, we're not going to be benefiting from the 50% damage boost this weapon could have, but we still can hit pretty good, I think, with special attacks. 24 and another 24 back-to-back, -back, actually. Not that bad. Of course, just one single kill is not a great sample size, but I honestly didn't feel much of a difference. 245, definitely not even close to my personal best, but I will have to give it way more attempts. Okay, only two kills later, I think. This felt extremely quick. 213, I tied my personal best. Yes, finally, we get the Dragon Blade Scare drop. Also, a perfect kill on it. It's normally seven of them, but we get 10. This is actually not that rare. It's one in 100, and it took us nearly 400 kills to get this drop. I think at this point we have done over 100 kills using the Accursed Scepter, and my review of it is that it doesn't really seem to be making much of a difference. We have still not had a new personal best, and if I haven't got a personal best in 100 kills, I think it doesn't really make too much of a difference. We have hit over a million magic experience, and with this kill we are now only 20 kills off done with the grind, and no siren staff, so this would be a great time to get it. It is looking like I'm going to be owing you guys a lot of money. This is kill number 502, actually, meaning we have only 10 kills left to do. It all comes down to this. This is the final kill we're doing on the grind for 512 kills. And uh, this is by far the most we've ever made during the series. So it is quite a lot on the line. After four days of killing the Whisperer, this is the final loot we are receiving on the grind. 700 steam runes no siren staff but a lot of other uniques and a lot of money made before we assess the final giveaway we have the two quartz to open for some extra loot and we get runes both times and let's go through the clue scrolls as well and no mediums this time but five easy ones to start off with you can of course get some really valuable stuff from these like the skull capes and all that but it uh, doesn't seem like we got anything too interesting. This is all the loot from the easy clues, so let's swiftly progress to the hard clue scrolls for no master and 118k on the second one, not bad. Definitely a bit more value from the hard clues, but let's finish off with the elites. Maybe we can get a master here, 146k, and lastly, 227k. And that is it. That is everything sold. The last massive collect here. In pure cash, 78 million. And in terms of unique items, we have 272 million GP. So let's do a price check. The giveaway that we are going to be doing in this video is 350.9 
million GP. Since changing the rules of giving away 100% of the loot on a lost challenge, I have seen a lot of feedback requesting me to split it in between two winners instead. So this time, for the first time, we will have two people winning 175.4 million GP each. If you want to partake, how you do that is on the screen right now. Good luck to all of you guys who want to participate.